Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 69-72 Carryover League. Today, we are in the America League Midwest. Kansas City and Milwaukee. Last time we saw the Milwaukee Brewers, folks, they were sweeping the Twins. And they made that huge move in this division, which shocked the rest of baseball world, as the Brewers are expected to be awful during this period. It's turned out not to be the case. However, a new day has risen, and now their opponent, the Kansas City Royals, let's take a look at the standings in the America League Midwest. The Kansas City Royals are zero games behind the, yeah, because they're in first place. Kansas City has won the first three games against Milwaukee in the series. The 12 and seven hot Brewers are now 12 and 10. Game and a half back, Everything just tightened up once again in this wild division. And when you look at Kansas City and the Twins, you see that the Twins are only a game behind the Royals. The Twins beat the Royals. But the reason they are behind, even just by a game, is because of the Brewers, the conduit between these two teams. You net seven games in the standings because the Twins are negative four against Milwaukee and the Royals are positive three. So it's a net of seven game differential here. And all that did was get the Royals a game in front of the Twins. Brewers are right there still, even though they lost the first three games of this series. It's gonna to be tough for the White Sox though. Even though they're just three games back, you have to pass three teams, which means, and everybody plays each other. So when the White Sox are winning, one of these other three teams is also winning, which means the White Sox are gonna be stuck at that three for a bit. And they're not gonna be able to catch this division title. The White Sox are at this point uh, perplexed and have to figure a way of getting out of last place. They could be the very well, the White Sox with this nice record, just a game under 500, could find themselves being the best fourth place team in all of baseball worthy of the eighth overall pick in next year's draft and yet better than a lot of third place teams in some other divisions well look over here for instance detroit the expos and the indians are just horrible or even over here in the national league you've got uh arizona colorado you get the idea folks so this has been the spunkiest division everybody has had a run where they look like the star Milwaukee's star turn just suddenly dramatically faded in three short games. The Twins were hot early. The Royals are hot now. And uh, let's get back to this uh, series. It is a game four in Milwaukee. Royals won all three. They were very close contests, but they won all three of them. Nothing stands out. I didn't want to bring them back up to review them. They were just five to three, two to one, and and the last score was 5-3, to three, I believe, as well. Pitching matchups are the key today. The Royals will send their first-round pick, Roger Nelson, their ace, against Milwaukee's first-round pick, Marty Patton, who would ultimately play for Kansas City one day, as well as the Red Sox. So let's get started from Milwaukee. They need to save the series not save their season, but they'd like to save this series and win a couple games. Even if they can't come all the way back, you want to win a couple games so that you can net maybe a negative two or something instead of a negative four. Negative four is just, that's a big uh, move down in the standings. So here we go. Pat Kelly leads it off for the Royals. 45, sky's the center. Amos Otis, 210, single one to five, rolls a six. Paul Shaw, 2-2, two -two, bounces short. Tommy Harper, playing third base today. He could play third anywhere, second, short. Could even play in the outfield is his best position. But anyway, 3-10, flies a lot. Mike Egan, 45, center. Fregosi, 65, double one to 19. It's just a single, he missed it, look at that. So it's a single. Don Mincher, 2-3, bounces the first. Top of two, John Mayberry, 310. This guy's all right. Bob Oliver, 2-4 short. Lou Pinella, 48, center. 
crisply played game thus far. Jerry McNertney, 1-9 walk. Johnny Briggs, 6-11, left X. But Pinella is a 4-E-10 in left field, and they finally come through off the of Kansas City defense with a base hit. Runners in the corners for Comer. They got to play back early on in this game. 2-9, let's take a look at Wayne Comer's card. And at first blush, you're thinking, well, what are we going to get out of this? But it's Homer 1-3. to three. Fly ball to left, and Milwaukee, you see, just is not living the charmed life currently. That's a three-run homer a series ago. But here, it's just a sack fly. Runner at first with one out for Steve Hubley. 64 Hubley off the Nelson card is a home run if you have power. But Steve Hubley doesn't have power, so it's just a single. Runs on the corners, one out for Ron Tebow. The eighth runner brings the infield up. 2-9, single 1-2-11. Oh, let's look at the Theobald card here. 2-9, single 1-11. Nice on base card for this guy. He rolls a 13 and lines out. And with two outs. They need Tommy Harper to do some damage. Tommy Harper. 2-7 is a K. And that inning just flamed out. Could have been a three-run homer. Another hit or a homer if he has power here. Theobald misses his. And we're still going. And that's sort of what Milwaukee has run into suddenly. A slump. They're slumped at the wrong time here. And we'll go to the third inning. Ed Kirkpatrick, 312, Lumax. The Twins are probably watching this on TV going, what the heck, how come the Brewers didn't play this poorly against us? Brady Patek, 53, right X. Steve Hubbard's a 3E4 in right field, and he makes the catch. Cookie, Rojas, 48 center. Patton's is perfect. Bottom of the third, Mike Keegan, 35, single. For Gosey, 210 is a single to left. Hegan, it's a 14 runner, but a hold. Going for the big inning. Need a clutch hit here, somebody. Don Mincher, 58. This guy's all right. Jerry McNertney, 64, and finally they come through here. Homer, 1 to 11, triple off of Roger Nelson. They'll take the triple. It's a two run triple. That's pretty good. And they're knocking Roger Nelson around a little bit. 3 0. They're going to bring the infield up with one out so this doesn't get out of hand. John Briggs, 65. Again, Nelson, they're denting his co column. Homer, 1 to 2, double. Brewers are finally putting it together here. Uh, Comer, 57 is a K. And Hubley, 2 9 with two outs. A two out hit for Hubley. Let's check out his card, Steve Hubley. Uh, he actually was a Seattle pilot in 69. Has just about everything on this card except power. You'd like to have the power against righties. Does have a homer, 1 of 10 on 3 6, though. Decent range, few errors, nice arm, B stealer. Nice little base percentage. Nice little package here. Base it in a right field. Briggs, a 14 runner is going to run against Pat Kelly, and he scores. So now the Brewers have finally got it tuned in. Theobald, 2-4, short. They take a 5-0 lead, and Marty Patton's now the story. He's perfect. Pat Kelly, 2-8. Bounce to short. Amos Otis, 2-3. Pops to second. Paul Shaw, 5-12. Bounces to first. Bottom of four. Tommy Harper, 39. There's a walk. Ace Steeler with a big five run lead. Let's take a shot here. And he is going to be 15 plus two arm. Safe. Mike Egan, 17K. Priosi, 49. Center. And Mincher with two outs. Bounce at the second. They do not get another run. Top of the fifth, John Mayberry, 38. Bounces to second. Bob Oliver, 57 is a K. And Lou Pinella, 4-8, skies to center. Perfection through five. No strikeouts. <laughs> Put 15 balls in play. Oh, one strikeout. There you go. Jerry McNertney, 35 is a K. Johnny Briggs, 6-10, catcher's card. For Patrick's 4 16 he's more of a corner outfielder type utility guy. Not really a catcher, but he makes the play. Wayne Comer bounces the first. We go to the sixth inning. It is Ed Kirkpatrick. 
34. Bounces to the pitcher. Cookie Rojas, 310, flies the center. And Cook, excuse me, yeah, Freddie Potek flies the center. And with two outs, Cookie Rojas, 2 6. Let's take a look at Cookie Rojas' card. This is his best offensive card ever in 71, hitting 300. And there goes your perfecto into the sixth inning. Nice little run there. That'll be a base hit. The fans give a give Marty a nice applause. Pat Kelly, 39, bounces to first. All right, five zip. Kind of a letdown for the Royals here after winning game three. Steve Hubley, 54, center X. Amos is Otis, the 284. Ron Theobald, 67, is a K. And Tommy Harper, 110 single. We'll try another stolen base. Same rules last time, safe again. Mike Hegan, 64. That is gone off the Roger Nelson card. Really puzzled Roger Nelson getting lit up today. Hasn't happened in a while for him. And for Go CK. So six innings are in the book. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. We're back to the enlightenment, folks. All right, seventh inning. Seven zip. Wow. Milwaukee comes back in a big way today. They must like YouTube. Last time we saw them, they were doing the same kind of thing. Amos Otis, 57 is a K. Paul Shaw, 47, same thing. And with two outs, John Mayberry rolls to second. A weak bloop single by Cookie Rojas, the only dent against Patton. Stretch time in Milwaukee. We are listening uh, We are listening to the dulcet tones of Chris Bell. This is I Am The Cosmos compilation. Uh, hour and 40 minutes if you're into that kind of thing, if you can make it through that. It's uh, a lot of uh, remixes and that alternate version kind of thing. Acoustic versions and everything you want to know and more about Mr. Bell. So, Bottom of the seventh. Nelson is going to come out. Kansas City says it's time to get our bullpen some work. So they're going to bring in um, Bill Butler to come in in the seventh. You know, it was the uh, commissioner's award that got the Royals next to draft pick and make them this good for participation. This year, they're probably not going to repeat that award. They, their bullpen has not pitched a lot this year because of great starting pitching. And so they're not getting high commissioner award numbers thus far. All right, Butler will chase Mincher out of the lineup as a lefty. And we'll go with, um, we'll go with Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox will come in and bat. Uh, he'll be the new third baseman, and Tommy Harper will temporarily be DH. Bobby Cox, 39. Single one of seven is a base hit. The Milwaukee Brave, Atlanta Brave, Milwaukee Brewer. You see the kind of a connection I made there. Um, Jerry McNertney. McNertney, 65. Off of the Butler card. Hammer one of three. Doubles a double. Second and third. All right, batting for Johnny Briggs which would put Harper into left field, will be Jerry May, who will also be the catcher. Now McNerty becomes the DH. Jerry May, 69 is a strikeout. Wayne Comer, 312 is a low max. The dreaded low max, and that inning kind of just fizzled out. Patton in the eighth. Big 7 off in lead, Bob Oliver, 35, a K. Lou Pinella, 48, skies to center field. Ed Kirkpatrick, 55, short X. Fregosi is a 2, wow. One of the best pitched games in Strat ever. The dreaded one-hitter. Right there, folks. All right, bottom of the eighth. Butler leaves. Let Horatio Pena get an inning.
this is this is going to be one of the wackiest division title postseason tournaments I've ever played, where the third place team might end up possibly being the best team in the division. Anyway, bottom of the eighth, uh, it'll be Hubley against Pena. Bounce to second. Theobald, skies it in the center. Amosotis, 2e4. And Tommy Harper, 33, bounce to short. All right. Fans are on their feet. They want more Marty Patton. They want him to get this one hit CGSO. Patek leads off the ninth, 411. Left X. And this is Harper is a two in left field, a 2e7 in left field. And no, oh boy. If he had a perfect game, that would have been ugly. But anyway, he drops that fly ball. You have runner at second. Cookie Rojas, 63, bounces to second base. This is Theobald, a 3e24. A three, and he makes the play. Runner goes to third. Do you bring the infield up? Nah. You will let him concede the shutout if he gets... Yeah, you're not going to bring the infield up with a seven-run lead. Pat Kelly, 33. Pops to short. And with two outs, Amos Otis, 54. Skies to right. B off the patent card. Two batters over the minimum. One of them was a drop fly ball by a 2-E7 in left field. And the only guy, yeah, Rojas did roll his column. He's a 2-5 to 10 card. He rolled a 2-6, so clearly that's a solid single there. The only imperfection for Marty Patton today, one of the top pitched games of the 2021 season. So we'll see how Marty's doing year to date. And we do the composite box, and once again, this division is still up for grabs again. One hitter, no walks, four strikeouts, complete game. Horatio Pena, three up and three down. Bill Butler, two hits and a K. Tough loss for Roger Nelson, though. He did get knocked around pretty pretty handily. Ten hits in six innings, seven runs. Everything earned. Two walks and six strikeouts. So, yeah, that kind of dampens Roger Nelson's Cy Young chances a little slightly. 0-4-2-7 in a game four. A game the Brewers had to have. Otherwise, they're just a 500 team in their last two series. So they had to do something here. And they did it. They got a win. I'd like to get one, at least one more win in this series to uh, give them title hopes to the division title hopes can still be a reality. So with this win, Milwaukee is now 13 and 10. Still very, very good. Still overachieving for the Seattle Pilot team. This is kind of a Cinderella. Still 13, 10, still very good. 258, it doesn't seem, that's probably right where they are. Maybe they're a little underachieving there. The 303 ERA, though, that is overachievement. That pitching is not nearly that good. Marty's now three and four on the year, but he's actually pitched better than that. As you just witnessed, he's got a 287 ERA. So the pitching's done very well this year. The hitting has been kind of sl uh, sluggish. Kansas City, with that loss, they are still a, ga a half game ahead of the uh, Brewers. They are hitting 235, which is shockingly low. They're very fortunate to be 16 and 12. 344 team ERA. Roger Nelson's 3 and 3 in 54 innings. His ERA is 350, and you just give up seven runs in six innings. So, just kind of ordinary kind of year for him. Mike Heedlin, the number two starter, is doing the best. But that 235 offense, that's going to get you dispatched. If you hit that way in the postseason tourney and the potential playoffs, you're going to get knocked out. So, four games in the books. I'll continue the series and report back what happens at the end of this video. We have played 413 games to this point. And the league is hitting 259. Dipped under 260s for the first time in about a month. The league ERA is 385, another low point in at least a month. It was dipping, uh, it got up to like 396 for a moment, and now it's settled down to 385. Probably will finish the year below four. 
Another quick peek at the standings again before I resume with the Game 5. Look at this division, folks. Interesting, intriguing set of scenario. You got Kansas City as the young up-and-comers. You got the twin, the old guard, veteran superstars, you know, on, at the e end of their at the end of their runs with Killebrew, Carew, and Oliva, and well, not Carew, but Killebrew and uh, Oliva and so forth. And then this Milwaukee team is kind of playing spoiler here. They're not supposed to be this good. White Sox team right there, 14 and 15 in a precarious spot. That's it today from the Fun America League Midwest. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time. Well, folks, uh, we're all done here. And the Royals, you know, talked about it and said that was silly. Why do why, we, why we play so fat, flat in a potential four-game sweep? It turned out to be a gentleman's sweep. They came back in Game 5, let off the first inning. They got six runs in the first inning and held on to win the game 8-5, to five, dispatching the Brewers. Four games to one, meaning that this wild division, the Royals are in first, the Twins are game behind, and the Brewers are game and a half behind. A lot still to be determined. Thanks for checking it all out.